Hello everyone and welcome back. Today is the next episode in the temperature measurement series and today we're going to be going over uh, thermistors, specifically um, looking through a thermistor data sheet, looking at how the tolerances affect the overall um, performance of the thermistor, um, so that next time you're specking a thermistor or looking for a thermistor for your application, you can understand what to look for um, to make sure it fits the needs you have. First up, we need to find the data sheet for a thermistor we're interested in. In this case, I'm going to be searching for the 104NT. Um, again, this is the most common 3D printing thermistor for hot ends. And we want to find the data sheet. It's usually a PDF. In this case, I know that this link is the manufacturer's data sheet, so I'm going to click on this. Before we go much further, let's make sure that this data sheet is actually for the thermistor we're interested in. And we can see right here the 104NT uh, matches the part number we searched earlier. Next, let's double check to make sure that this data sheet actually has all the information we need. And the most critical part is to make sure that it has a table like this that lists the uh, temperature and resistance values for the thermistor you're interested in. And this is really critical because we need to define uh, three of these points uh, in the Steinhardt Hart equation in order to get the A, B, and C coefficients. I want to stop for a second and stress how important it is to find this table. If the thermistor you're looking at using, for instance, the generic NTC 100K Beta 3950, does not have a full uh, resistance versus temperature table, and you have to use just the beta value, just stop right now and find another thermistor. The error associated with assuming a constant beta value at hot end temperatures is large enough that basically the rest of this analysis doesn't matter. Um, it is such a huge error that you're just starting off on the wrong foot. In this case, we have the full table of data we need to define the thermistor in our firmware. And so we can go ahead and look at the next step, which is the resistance tolerance calculation. In order to understand the resistance tolerance, we need three values. The first one is the rated temperature, which in this case is 25 degrees Celsius. The rated resistance tolerance at that temperature, which is plus or minus 3%. And then the rated beta value, which in this case is plus or minus 2%. With the data from that data sheet, we can create this plot. What this plot tells us is it says from thermistor to thermistor, the resistance at a given temperature can vary by a certain amount and the thermistor will still be within spec. For instance, let's take 25 degrees Celsius for example. We know that at 25 degrees Celsius, the nominal resistance value is 100 kilo ohms. However, since the total resistance tolerance at this point is 3%, the actual resistance of a given thermistor may be between 97 kilo ohms and 103 kilo ohms at 25 degrees Celsius. As we get further and further away from that nominal rated temperature, the air builds up because we don't know exactly what the slope is of the thermistor. So in this case, once we're up to hot end temperatures, um, our total resistance tolerance has built up quite significantly until we're about to say plus or minus 15%, uh, which is a significant amount of variation. In the end though, we don't really care about resistance tolerances, we care about temperature tolerances. We want to know at 200 degrees Celsius, is my thermistor plus or minus 5 degrees Celsius accurate or plus or minus 10 degrees or plus or minus 50 degrees. So we need a way to convert from resistance tolerance to a temperature tolerance value. To understand how we convert from a resistance tolerance to a temperature tolerance, we need to revisit the resistance versus temperature curve for the thermistor we're looking at. What we're really interested in here is the derivative or the slope of the resistance versus temperature curve. I've demonstrated this with three triangles. At very, very low temperatures, um, a large change in resistance only changes the temperature a small amount. So for instance, if our resistance tolerance is large here, our temperature tolerance will still be very small because it isn't affected much with resistance. As we get closer and closer to ambient conditions and then out into our uh, kind of hot end temperatures, a very small change in resistance equals a large change in temperature. Once we've done the math, we can finally see what the overall temperature tolerance is for the 104NT thermistor. 
As expected, at the ambient rated condition of 25 degrees Celsius, our air is quite small, only around uh, plus or minus 0.64 degrees Celsius. As we get out closer to 200 degrees Celsius though, you're looking at plus or minus 7 degrees Celsius, or out at 300 degrees Celsius, uh, plus or minus 13 degrees Celsius. Before we go, I've made this chart dynamic, so we can investigate how changing the nominal resistance tolerance, the beta tolerance, and the rated temperature changes the temperature tolerance. Again, a reminder, right now we're at 3% nominal resistance tolerance, 2% beta tolerance, and a rated temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. If we change that resistance tolerance from 3% to 1%, you'll notice at the rated temperature of 25 degrees Celsius, our um, temperature tolerance has decreased significantly. However, out at 200 or 300 degrees Celsius, we've only changed a little bit. So we changed from about 13, uh, plus or minus 13 degrees Celsius down to around 11.3. Changing the resistance tolerance back to 3% and the beta tolerance uh, from 2% to 1%, the uncertainty around the 25 degrees Celsius uh, mark really didn't change at all. But then out at 300 degrees Celsius, we've improved uh, quite a bit um, from 13 to plus or minus 7 degrees Celsius. Finally, a best case scenario is where we have a 1% resistance and a 1% beta tolerance. There are some thermistors out there um, that meet this specification that can be used for 3D printers. In this case, our uh, tolerance at the 300 degrees Celsius point is actually all the way down to 6 degrees. So fairly significant improvement over the uh, 104NT thermistor. However, there is one more thing we can change, and that is the rated temperature. This one's fairly difficult because, again, we're mostly buying off-the-shelf thermistors, but theoretically, if a manufacturer wanted to properly rate a thermistor for hot end temperature, they would change the rated temperature from 25 degrees Celsius to something closer to the normal print temperature, say 200 degrees Celsius. If we do that, here's what happens. Essentially, the area that is most accurate is right around that hot end temperature, and then your air down here at the lower ambient ranges is actually still fairly reasonable. We're looking at plus or minus 1.3 degrees Celsius. And again, that's because the slope um, at the lower ambient conditions is so much steeper, um, so a greater change in resistance is uh, less significant in the temperature tolerance. So ideally, if we could have a thermistor with 1% uh, resistance tolerance, a 1% beta tolerance, and 200 degrees Celsius rated temperature, um, we'd have a really, really solid thermistor um, in this temperature range that would, you know, at least match or even uh, bypass a PT100 or PT1000 RTD. And that wraps it up for today. I hope you learned something new and that next time you need to purchase a thermistor, you're able to find the relevant information on the data sheet uh, to better inform your decisions. I have a lot more temperature measurement content coming up, not only analyzing some of the other thermistors I didn't get to cover today, uh, but also looking at uh, RTDs and different uh, RTD amplifier uh, boards, such as the analog one that has a 10x gain, as well as the MAX31865. If you're interested in more content like that, feel free to subscribe. Um, also follow me on Twitter for other projects I'm working on that I haven't had the time to create video content on yet. Until next time, have a good one.